Hymn number 203, Jesus Christ is Risen Today.
sin and death and have made all things new in him. May we, being dead to sin and alive to you in Jesus Christ, reign with him in glory, who with you and the Holy Spirit is alive, one God, now and forever. Amen. I'd like to invite the adults to be seated and the children to come forward. So what do you think? There's a beautiful cross here in front of me, full of flowers, and we have this Easter candle, and those help us remember the story of Jesus. And you guys were around at Christmas time, right? And what happened? What do we celebrate at Christmas? Yeah, we remember Jesus' birth. And um, many people who met Jesus when he walked this earth um, knew that God was in him. And uh, so they liked to listen to him and get to know him. And um, they wanted to know how we should live. And Jesus gave them a very simple way to think about how we should live. That we should love God and love each other. But sometimes loving people can be difficult. Especially if we think they're not very nice or there's something very funny about them. It can be hard to love them. And there were some people who thought, didn't like that Jesus said we should love God and love everybody. So they put him to death on a cross. And that was very sad. And very sad for those who thought Jesus was wonderful and that God was with him. But then, three days later, some of his friends went to the tomb so that they could remember him and, and be near him. And they discovered what? The body was empty. Yes, the tomb was empty. And I think this is the story over here of this beautiful Easter garden that you guys made. So they, there's, they went to the, there's the, the, the women who went to the tomb, and they discovered the stone had been moved, and there was just a grave cloth left, but no body, right? Now here we see that there was the cross that Jesus died on, and there were two criminals who died and we remember this being in a garden because gardens are beautiful, right? And we are waiting for our gardens to grow outside um, to see flowers and beautiful new life. And some angels came and told the two women and, uh, that Jesus was alive. And in the whole season of Easter, the last 50 days, we remember and read the stories about how Jesus was made alive again. And Jesus was made alive again um, in, in a new and different resurrection body. Jesus will never die again, and he is with us. And his presence fills our lives. And we have hope. We can have hope that all the terrible things that we know of this world are not the final answer. But God's love is more powerful than anything else. And so we continue to practice what Jesus taught, which was to love God and love others. So let's just say a prayer as we look at this Easter garden. Thank you, Jesus, that you are still alive, that you are with us in our hearts, in this congregation, in the bread and wine of communion, and that you 
speak to us through the Bible stories. Help us to love you with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love other people as we love ourselves. In your name we pray. Amen. And I know we miss Dorothy. Just me too. Oh, yes, Miss Dorothy is uh, some good stuff planned for you. I won't give away any secrets. <laughs> Open for me the gates of righteousness, 
I will enter them. I will offer thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. He who is righteous may enter. On this day the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I will give thanks to you. For you answered me and have become my salvation. The same stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. On this day the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the Lord's doing. And is marvelous in our eyes. On this day the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. On this day the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it.
dawn, they came to the tomb, picking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in black and clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground, but the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you, while he was still in Galilee, that the Son of Man must be handed over to the sinners and be crucified, and on the third day rise again. Then they remembered his words, and returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb, stooping and looking in. He saw the linen cross by himself. Then he went home amazed at what has happened. The false gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
But that it happened, that Jesus is risen, is something that all four biographers of Jesus tell, and also that 500 or so people who met with the risen Christ before he ascended into heaven, that they report. Resurrection is not simply resuscitation. In certain cases, we have the medical knowledge to do that now. Resurrection is something profoundly new that God has done. And that has implications for the whole of life. For what you think is finished may turn out just to be starting. What you think is maybe a dead end, and probably is a dead end, may rather turn out to be a fork in the road. For resurrection changes all the rules. And that can be unsettling, even terrifying. So it's no wonder people are reluctant to believe it. I mean, if he had just died on the cross, we could look at his life as a beautiful tragedy. And indeed, there are many such beautiful tragedies around us. But because he's been raised from the dead, we can look at his whole life as vindicated, all he said and done. For God is at work, death is defeated, and everything Jesus said and did is true. With the resurrection of Jesus, God's power is unleashed into the world. A power that is recreative, restorative, healing. Hope really is the shape of our tomorrow. All our pain, shame, and regret will finally be redeemed. Nothing is wasted. Fear will finally pass away and joy will prevail. And all will finally be beautiful. For the power of the resurrection is the power that dismantles every other power. That ugly cross is now beautiful, sprouting life. God's power is the power of love, and love wills and works for the life, health, and wholeness of the beloved. Love does not return evil for evil, but love overcomes evil with good. And God overcame evil with forgiveness and overcame death with resurrection life. Peter's sermon that we read in Acts spells this out for us. God anointed Jesus with the Holy Spirit and with power, and Jesus went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed, for God was with him. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Why do you look for the living among the dead, say the angels? Jesus is not here, but has risen. The new heavens and the new earth that Isaiah foresaw are now coming into being. Joy, not weeping, is the final reality. Love, God's love, is where life is found. So look for God's love at work around you, transforming the world. Do not seek the living among the dead. 
Seek those places where love blossoms. Then bear witness to that love in all you say and do. The proclamation of Easter Day is that all is well. In the end, God's will, not ours, is done. Love is the victor. Death is not the end. The end is life. His life and our lives through him. And now existence has greater depths of beauty, mystery, and good endings that the wildest visionary has even dared to dream. Christ our Lord is risen. Alleluia. In the name Alleluia. of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Jesus, our exalted Lord, has been given all authority. Let us seek his intercession that our prayers may be perfected by his prayer. The response to the petition, Lord, hear us, is Lord, graciously hear us. Jesus Christ, great high priest, living forever to intercede for us, Pray for the church, your broken body in the world. We pray for Linda, our primate, Stephen, our bishop, Renee, our priest, and for the clergy and people of the Diocese of Huron, St. Stephen, the martyr Edmonton, and the Boai Diocese. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. Jesus Christ, King of Righteousness, enthroned at the right hand of the Majesty on high, pray for the world and make it subject to your gentle rule. 
we pray for the Cold Lake First Nations, that a spirit of justice and reconciliation may prevail. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Jesus Christ, Son of Man, drawing humanity into the life of God, pray for your sisters and brothers in need, distress or sorrow, remembering Yah Asante and Jocelyn Keith Asante, and especially remembering our brothers and sisters of the people of Ukraine. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Jesus, pioneer of our salvation, bringing us to glory through your death and resurrection, surround with your saints and angels all those who have died, trusting in your promises, and give comfort and peace to those who mourn. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Jesus Christ, Lord over all things, ascending far above the heavens and filling the universe, pray for us who receive the gifts you give for work in your service. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Jesus Christ, keep the, keep the church in the unity of the Spirit and in the bond of peace and bring the whole created order to worship at your feet. For you are alive and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to this table. Let us confess to our sins confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we, we confess that we have sinned against you. you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and have been humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, and that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. My sisters and brothers, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Will you please share a sign of God's peace with one another? <laughs>
our closing hymn. Number 210, yours be 